Here's an integral that I would normally handle informally. And so I'm going to do that and then I'll illustrate a more formal method because it's instructive. So what I see here is a function cubed sitting right next to the derivative of that function. So I'm just recognizing the effects of the chain rule in this that, well, maybe it just came from sine to the fourth over four. And if I differentiate that, the chain rule would produce the cosine. So I'm able to guess this pretty quick because I have a thing to the third right next to the derivative of that thing. I get one fourth sine to the fourth theta. As theta goes from zero to pi over three. And just, I mean, that may seem a little bit reckless, but it's really where you want to get to in terms of efficiency. But you should at least be mentally checking that it makes sense. So just over here in a thought bubble, I can check. And I want to differentiate this one fourth sine to the fourth theta. So I would differentiate the sine to the fourth with respect to sine theta, and that gives me four sine cubed. And then the chain rule says you have to differentiate sine theta with respect to theta, which is cosine theta. And I totally forgot to bring down my four, which cancels that one out. So again, that four came from the power rule. All right, so it all checks out. Um, now I look at my limits of integration and I notice that if I plug a zero in for theta, the sine of zero is zero. So forget about that. That happens pretty frequently, so I like to just cross them out up here in the limits. So all I have to put in is the pi over 3. So I get sine pi over 3 to the fourth power. So that's a 1 fourth, and then the sine of pi over 3, I have to think about the unit circle for this. That's root 3 over 2. To the fourth power and so 2 to the fourth is 16 and root 3 squared is 3 and I'm doing that twice so I end up with a 9 in the numerator and 4 times 16 is 64 so I end up with 9 and 60 fourths for my answer okay I wanted to show an alternative approach um, of course, you could do a formal U substitution on any of these. And this time, I'm going to transform the limits of integration because I have a definite integral. It's always an option once you turn it into a U integral to just leave it that way for the rest of the analysis as long as you transform these limits. So I'm going to let U equal sine theta. So I'm just taking the inner function here. I have this function sine theta all raised to the third power. I want that to look like a u cubed. And then du is going to be cosine theta d theta. And I already have that piece. So now I have u, cube, u cubed du. All right, so this turns into the integral as theta goes from 0 to pi over 3 u cubed du. So one option is to guess the antiderivative, 1 fourth u to the fourth, and then substitute the definition of u back in, and you're going to end up with this expression evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. Another option is to just forget about theta for the rest of the problem. And to do that, I've got to transform these limits of integration. So when theta equals 0, I've got to figure out what u is. Here's the definition of u u is going to be the sine of 0, which is 0. When theta equals pi over 3, u is going to be the sine of pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2. So my integral is now transformed permanently. I don't have to ever think about theta again. The integral is u goes from 0 to root 3 over 2 of u cubed du easy guess, 1 fourth u to the fourth, evaluated from 0 to root 3 over 2. 
and I end up with one fourth root three over two to the fourth, which is exactly what I got last time. And that simplifies to nine sixty fourths.